Alrighty, welcome. So here I'm going to show you how to calculate an interaction by hand. First of all, it's a lot, a lot of fun, so get ready. We're going to go with our same example of two independent variables, the first being the number of hours you spent studying for your statistics test, and the second using a mythical math drug called mathene. So these are two independent variables. So the DV, which you only have one, are your test scores. <gasps> Since we only have one, that means that this is a univariate. Okay, so we're going to come over here. This is where I have the data laid out. A1, which is 0 to 15 hours that you spent studying. A2, 15 to 30 hours that you spent studying. 0 milligrams, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, so on and so on. Yeah? Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is calculate our column statistics. For each group of data, and we have six here, you want to calculate the sum, so 67 plus 68 plus 72 plus 75 is 282. Then you want to do the sum x squared. So 67 squared plus 68 squared plus 72 squared plus 75 squared. And then lastly, you want to do the mean. So 67 plus 68 plus 72 plus 75 divided by 4. So by magic, we filled in the rest of the column statistics for the rest of your groups. You can check over these if you want to make sure that your calculations are correct. So the next part, remember how you would do it in a regular ANOVA, is you go to your handy dandy source table. So for your sources, we have our independent variable A and B, so you put those down. Then our within group is going to be S of AB. Then we also need the interaction AB, or it could be A times B. Now this is for two factor. If you had three factor, so ABC, then you would have A, B, C, then you would have to have every combination of those two. So you'd have AB, BC, and AC. Then you would need the interaction of all three, so ABC. Your within term then would be S of ABC. And that's how you would keep going. If you had another factor, then you would have ABCD, AB, AC, AD, B, C, B, D, and so on and so on. So these are just the formulas for each of the different components of the source table and we'll go through all of them individually. But remember, a bracket is just a mathematical recipe. Theoretically, it doesn't mean anything. Um, for the degrees of freedom, these are going to be the formulas that you're going to use to find those. Mean squared is really just sum squared divided by degrees of freedom. So the next part, we're actually going to start working on the sums of squared. The first thing you want to do is create a chart of sums, because we're working with sums. Ah, so for A1, B1, you're going to add up the four numbers that we had in that group. And that adds to 282. So these are just the column statistics that we did in the first step, and this is just the sum of x. So we're not doing anything new here, we're just reorganizing it. Now I'm just going to add these to get the sum of that column, which is 595. And then add across the rows. And then add here, which would be the same as these three added up to get your grand, grand sum. Okay, so the first thing is the A bracket term. So when we're looking at A, we're looking at the sums for the A groups, right? So A1, the sum, is 950. So it's going to be 950 squared plus the sum of A2. 
which is 969 squared. Now you're going to divide that by everything except for A, so B times N. So B, we had three levels. So it's going to be 3 times n, which is the number of people in each group, which we had 4. A little n is the number of people in each group. A capital N is the total number of people, which would be 24. So this would give you an A bracket term of this crazy, crazy number. Now for B bracket term, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with B's. So the sums of B1 is 595 squared plus the sum of B2, which is 695 squared, plus the sum of B3, which is 629. Square that and divide it by everything except for B, which is A times N. A, we have two groups. N is, again, lowercase n, the number of people in each group, 4. And that will give us another very crazy number. Okay, so Y backward number is for your individuals. And up here, according to our chart of sums, which my puppet master is going to import in here because he thought it would be funny, um, you want to add all of your column statistics, which is sum x squared. That's what we did from step one. So, if you just add across, you have a bunch of crazy, crazy numbers. In here you want to be really careful because there's a lot of room for manual errors. And you'll be kicking yourself if you make a mistake. Okay, now T is going to be your favorite bracket because it's just the total sum, which is 1919. Square that. Oopsies. Divided by everything that's not T, which is A times B times n. A, we've got two groups. B, we have three groups. And n, the number of people in each group, is four. And this will give you a very long number. Okay, we're halfway done with our bracket terms. The next is AB. We don't have sums of our ABs, or do we? So they're actually just going to be the numbers in our columns, because remember, this is already a chart of sums, right? So the sum of A1, B1 is 282. Square that, plus the sum of A1, B2, which is 320. Square that, plus 348 squared. And keep going, plus 313 squared, plus 375 squared plus 281 squared. And I'm feeling a little lazy, so I just... Okay, now, um, excuse me. You're going to divide by everything except for AB, which leaves you with just N. And N, again, because it's lowercase, is 4. This will give you an even crazier number. Or maybe equally crazy.
Okay, so remember, we're still working on calculating those sums squared. So now that we have all of our bracket terms, which I very conveniently and semi-neatly recopied, we're just going to plug and chug, plug and chug, plug and chug. So A bracket minus T bracket is going to give you your A term for sum squared, and so on, and so on. And at this point, you can probably just speed it up. Okay, so here are our final sum squared terms. Here you should never get a negative number. If you have, then you've unfortunately made a mistake somewhere and you have to go fix it. So you can check over these to make sure you got the same things. Okay, so next in our source table are our degrees of freedom. These are formulas that you want to memorize to save your life if you ever have to calculate one of these by hand, in class, or on a test. Trust me, you should memorize these. It's part of one of those, you know, useful things that you can have in your head. So A, we've got two groups. Two minus one is one. B, we have three groups. So 3 minus 1 is 2. This is just 1 times 2. And A times B times N, remember it's lowercase, so it's number of people in each group that we have, which is 4. And that will give us... at our source table now and I've just filled in everything, right? We just spent like the last 10 years calculating our sum squares and we just calculated our degrees of freedom. So mean square luckily is a much easier step. It's just sum squared divided by degrees of freedom. So here this is 15.04 divided by 1 which is 15.04 and that amazingly I did in my head. 646.33 divided by 2 This number divided by this number, and this number divided by this number. Now remember again, just like in our other ANOVAs, our error term is this one right here. It's the MS within. So remember, in ANOVA, when we're comparing two groups, we always want the difference to come from between the groups, not within the group. And this is the within term. Because you can't really compare that two groups are significantly different from each other if all the variance is coming from within one group. Now, remember again, just like in our other ANOVAs, our error term is this one right here. It's the MS within. So remember, in ANOVA, when we're comparing two groups, we always want the difference to come from between the groups, not within the group. And this is the within term. Because you can't really compare that two groups are significantly different from each other if all the variance is coming from within one group. So make sure to keep in mind that this is our error term. So with that in mind, that this is our error term, our F terms are just going to be our MS terms divided by this one. So this up here is going to be 15.04 divided by 22.29. This is going to be 323.165 divided by 22.29. And same thing for this number. From this, you'll get your F terms. And here, to check whether it's significant, you would do the same thing that you do in a regular ANOVA.
Okay, really quick, quick effect size. Are those big numbers? I don't know. So what we can do is our R squared can be the sum squared of our within term, AB, divided by the sum squared of our total. So sum squared of our within term is 401.25 divided by sum squared total. And to get this number, you just add all these numbers up. Simple, right? Divide by that, and we get 0 0.49. Now, everybody's standards for what effect sizes are big, small, or moderate really depend, but 0.49 on mostly everybody's standards is a huge effect size. That means 50% of our variance is attributed to our independent variables. So we just came up with three F variables, F values. Um, 0.6, 14.5, and 23.4. And if you'll notice, the interaction comes from the A times B, which is an F value of 23.4. And you don't have to be a statistics guru to be able to notice that that's probably going to give you a significant F, meaning that we have a significant interaction here.